right? So when you read it, you're blessed. And when you hear it, you're blessed. But I need to read this to you. 3, 13 through 19. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church, Annette, I'm going to need you here because you're a good pronunciation here. Yeah, Laodicean writes, these things says, amen, the faithful and true witness, capital T, the beginning of the creation of God. He says this, I know the works, comma, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, or naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, white in garments, that you may be clothed, that shamed or your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eye with eyes of, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent, because I stand at the door and knock. Even in the natural. It's just the way the enemy comes against us. If you lose your zeal, or you get comfortable. Remember they always say you don't know what you have until you lost it. even relationships like that. You're not meaning to do it. You get tired. You get tired and you come home. Maybe the age creeps in. Maybe something happened that day that the best you got for your your better half is probably just error. Love you. What do you want for dinner? What do you want me to get you for dinner? Because we're tied up in the things of the world. We got exhausted. The enemy wants to keep your relationship with Jesus. Get you in that comfortable. And lukewarmness basically what means a negative. He will spit you out. We think we're zeal and we love him, but seriously, examine yourself. Sometimes we get jealous of people that, that serve him more than what we think about serving. They're at his feet. Not buying his shoes for him, but at his feet. Spending time. We know the story about Martha and Mary. Spending time. I have to say this because if you can understand the natural. You ever heard that? You lost that love and feeling. How'd you lose it? You didn't lose it. It's still there. And just like when we counsel marriage couples, whatever you had that beginning, stir that thing which back up. Wherever you left God and that zeal, go back to where that zeal was. I'm not saying to quit your job, leave everything you got to follow him. I would love to. But tell me, would that not be selfishness? Because how can he tell you husbands love your wives if you're going to leave your wife? How would he say a man has to work if you're going to quit your job? That quiet time with him, we have to. What used to be can be again. Amen? How's your thermometer? First John two four first John chapter two Amen. First John chapter two four six.
Yeah, First John 2, 4 through 6. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are him, are in him. He who says he abides in him, out himself also walk just as he walked. Take you down to eight. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which they, things are true in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he has the light and hates his brother in the darkness until now. He who knows his brother abides in the light. But if there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother in the darkness and walks in the darkness. And does not know him is going. Because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Brothers and sisters, sometimes the darkness is blinding Cliff's eyes. It's that quick. Especially as leaders, it's very quick for spirits to ride up on us. Okay, and that's why prayer is very important, even in yours. It can rise up. You may not even be sensitive because we think we're comfortable until we examine ourselves. How can I love God if I have hate and bitterness? Don't concern yourself about what you have in you. Concern yourself why you ain't got rid of it yet. Because that's just justification to keep you in the relationship to any relationships. <coughs> Amen? Let's go on to... I'm going to go to 15 to 17. This is basically more, how do I love God? How do you love God now? Now, I showed you how you loved you. How do we love God? Remember I said the only way to show God love is obedience and spending time with him, right? So the word is given to us how to direct us how to love him without works. Not by, I do this, I do that. You know, Jesus, I laid hand on the sick, and they recovered. I cast out demons in your name. Remember that scripture? And he says, get away from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. So it's not about the gifts. Gifts are given to you without repentance. So he says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the Father's but the world's. And the world is passing away, y'all, and the lust is in it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. You know what the will of God is in shorthand? Obedience. How do you know when the will of God is when you're doing what he's asked you to do? How do you know when you're out of the will of God? When you're not doing what he's asked you to do and you're going to sense it. I'm not going to talk about, I must be out of the will of God because I got a tax. Not necessarily. You're probably in the will of God. Sometimes you're out of the will of God. You may not even experience the attacks because you're caught up in the world. You're in your comfort zone. Amen? Not obeying him is sin. Not doing what you know to do. How and what do we show our love and aberration? I spelled that right, I think, too, and I sounded it right. Towards him, obedience and respect. James 1, 2, James chapter 1. Or 121. As Pastor Nett was saying in the beginning, We have requirements. In God's kingdom, there is no democracy. Either you will or you won't. You do or you don't. Much given is much required. When we reason it out on intellect, we reason our, our ways out 
to 